to the Spotlight series on branding fluid applications. Customers have been branding their PeopleSoft environments for many years with classic PeopleSoft. This typically included rich websites. Now that PeopleSoft is moving to our fluid user interface, we're concentrating on fluid branding capabilities. This session is on fluid branding only. There are many resources available for classic branding, but since fluid is our strategic direction for the user experience, we'll focus on that here. So here's the agenda for this session. First, we'll do a brief branding overview. Then we'll talk about branding with Theme Builder. That's a new feature of the PeopleSoft Interaction Hub. We'll talk about what it is, how to access Theme Builder, creating new themes, and so on. Then we'll cover branding using PeopleTools macro sets. This is a feature that can be used in PeopleTools if you're not using the Interaction Hub. And then we'll talk about some additional resources. All right, let's start off with a branding overview. So we feel that branding in Fluid is just as important as it is in Classic. Why is that? Well, customers want to create a system that reflects their company or institution. That is, they want their company's colors, logos, icons, and so on to show in their PeopleSoft system. The new theme builder that's part of the Interaction Hub makes this branding easy, especially across the cluster. If you have a cluster of PeopleSoft applications, you can brand in one place and then propagate that across all your PeopleSoft. It's quite easy to use. It's an activity guide, or as some people call it, a wizard. It's a three-step activity guide. It's, it's very simple and easy and intuitive to use. In addition, you can create different themes for different user constituencies. So for example, if a university has different campuses in their university system, they might have different brandings for each of their campuses. Similarly, in a commercial enterprise, a company might have different brandings for different divisions or regions within their enterprise. The theme builder is part of the restricted use license of the Interaction Hub. So the Interaction Hub can be installed free of license charge and customers can use the Interaction Hub as part of that free restricted use license. In addition, there's now branding part of the People Tools, and this is called the People Tools Macro Sets. This offers the same kind of deep branding options. It's important to know that you can do the same sort of branding with Theme Builder as you can with People Tools Macro Sets. It's just that the theme builder is a good bit easier to use, and so we recommend that customers use the Interaction Hub theme builder if possible. If they don't use the Interaction Hub, then they can use PeopleTools macro sets. All right, next we'll get into branding with theme builder. First, we'll give an explanation of what theme builder is. Then we'll talk about how an administrator accesses theme builder, someone that's doing branding. Then we'll talk about how to create a new theme and how to update an existing theme. So what is Theme Builder? Well, it's a three-step guided process. It's part of the PeopleSoft Interaction Hub, as I mentioned earlier. It's delivered in Image 2, which is the currently available image for the PeopleSoft Interaction. You can also choose this feature individually through selective adoption, and the bug number is listed here on the slide. However, we feel that most people will benefit from taking the full Interaction Hub product and as I mentioned earlier, you can do that as part of the restricted use license. The Theme Builder enables customers to update their most common and essential branding parameters. This is typically things like the company logo, banner color, homepage background, and so on. This constitutes probably 80 to 90% of what most people will do in, in their branding. In addition, there's an advanced settings that lets you update all sorts of branding parameters in, in great depth. You can also have approvals turned on. So for example, you may have a user or users that can design branding schemes and then submit those for approval. Uh, those will not be published until they are approved. In addition, at the end, you can create a change package that will migrate, that you can use with uh, application data sets and migrate those branding themes from one system to another. All right, you want to use Theme Builder. How does one access it? Let's take a look. How do I access Theme Builder? Well, to do so, you must be assigned one of two roles, either the Theme Builder administrator or the Theme Builder user. Typically, the Theme Builder administrator, in addition to having privileges to create themes, is also an approver. So if a Theme Builder user submits a theme, uh, the Theme Builder administrator would approve it. But both uh, roles can create themes. One accesses Theme Builder most commonly using a tile 
on the Hub Administrator homepage. That tile is not found there by default. You can add it, however, using the Personalize option on the homepage itself. You can also access Theme Builder using the navbar, and that's found in the Portal Administration folder of the navbar. If you go to that Portal Administration folder, there are three uh, options there. One is the Theme Builder itself. This takes you to the same three-step guided process that you would find if you access it using the tile. In addition, the Theme Builder Advanced Settings lets you brand many more branding elements to much greater depth. You can also turn on approvals using the Theme Builder installation page. So let's take a quick look at a demo of how you add the Theme Builder tile to the home page. Okay, let's look at how to add a tile, the Theme Builder tile, to the Hub Administrator homepage. As I mentioned, it's not part of the page by default, so if you want to include it there, you need to add it. So first of all, go to the Hub Administrator homepage. You can see the tiles that are there by default. Then go to the Personalize menu. That opens up. You can add a tile. Simply go down to Hub Administration folder and choose the Theme Builder tile and add it and save it. And there you go. Now you can see that it's added to the home page. All you have to do is click on it and that will initiate the theme builder. And there we are. Now let's take a look at how one creates a new theme using theme builder. Here are the steps for creating a new theme. First you navigate to the theme builder using either of the methods that I described earlier. Then you click the, click the create theme button and enter a name and description of your new theme. At that point you can update all the parameters that you'd like to update, the colors, logos, and so on, in the defined theme step. Then you assign that theme to the appropriate users, typically through a role or a permission list. Finally, you'll publish changes and propagate those changes across your cluster. And then you have the option of migrating those changes to different content systems. And we'll show you how to do all of these things. Okay, let's look at the process for creating a new theme. First, go to the Hub Administrator homepage and you can click on the tile that we added earlier, the Theme Builder tile, and that will initiate the Theme Builder. Here you can see a lot of the themes that are, that are present here. Notice that one is set as the default. One of the popular things to do also will be to clone an existing theme and then edit that clone. Uh, this lets you take advantage of all the work that's already been done or themes that have been delivered. But we're gonna create a new here, theme here, so click the Create Theme button and give it a name. And you can give it a brief description if, you, if you'd like as well. We'll do that here. Continue. Once you've given it a name and a description, the theme builder will open up, that is the activity guide will open up. You can see that here. You can see that it's a three-step activity guide. And you can see up in the upper left-hand corner there is the name of the theme that we just created. Notice the values that you can change in the theme builder. Company logo, the small form factor logo, so if you see it on a phone, for example, the banner color, home page, back button, and so on. These are the basic elements of the theme that most people will want to change most of the time. Uh, there are advanced settings that you can get into. You can also preview what the theme will look like on different types of devices. For now though, let's just change some of the colors. So let's change the banner color first. Notice that this is a gradient. There's a start color and an end color. And so the, the color will be gradually changed from one to another. So you set both the start and the end color. We'll do that here. And then we'll change perhaps the home page background, something complementary to the, the banner color that we just changed. And the footer color as well. And then we'll change the back button too. Okay. And you see in the preview that it's, that it's changed the colors that we've just added. So uh, save it and then go to the next step, the assigned theme step. So here we determine who gets to see this theme. So we'll add some role attributes. 
This, this is typically either a permission list or a role to determine the constituents of or the people that will see this theme. But most of the time, that'll be a role. So here are a number of roles that we can add. Notice that there are quite a few of these. So if you want to find a particular one, you can also do a search on that. So that's what we'll do here because we want to add the administrator role to our new theme. Search for it. There's the one we want. We add that, give it a priority, and there we go. Now we can see the attributes or the roles that are active for this theme. Off we go, and we save that. Now we've completed two steps, and now we can go to the review and publish step. So here we can see the changes that we've made, the color changes. We can also review the theme assignments or the roles, the people that we've changed that, are, that, are, that will access this theme. And then we simply publish it and, and we're all set. Now this will be propagated to other things. Once you've finished with the, the theme builder process, you can create a data migration project. Now, this enables you to take this theme and propagate it to other people's soft systems. So for example, from dev to test to proj and so on. So just click the data migration project button. That enables you to give it a name and a description. Note that this, that the theme builder itself doesn't propagate the theme across different environments. That's done in the data migration workbench, and that's outside the scope a bit of this demonstration. But uh, what Theme Builder does is it packages everything up really nicely for that data migration process. So we'll save that, and there we go. We're done. So once you've completed the create data migration process, that opens the data migration workbench automatically. Now again, this is outside of the scope of, of this demonstration, but you can see here's the project name that we created. Now that we've made some changes, let's look at the results of those changes. So here you can see a home page with a header, the home page background, footer, and so on, all with the colors that we chose during in the theme builder. Let's look at advanced settings for theme builder. So from any page, you can go to the nav bar, open that up, open the navigator, go to portal administration, and then the theme builder folder. Now you can see the theme builder entry there. That's the same as clicking on the tile. But we're going to go to the theme builder advanced settings right now. So here are all the themes that you can edit. Notice that you can, you can clone and edit them. So let's, let's edit one. And you can see that some of the properties are the same as in the activity guide, but the, the advanced settings gives you much greater depth. There's so many more parameters that you can edit for so many things. Even among the macros that are part of the activity guide, there are more choices here. So there's great depth that you can apply to your themes using the advanced settings. So you can see all the colors, various logos, and so on. In addition to creating new themes, you have the option of updating an existing theme. We suspect this will actually be the most common use case where a customer will clone some delivered themes and then update the parameters for that clone. So let's take a look at that. Now let's say you've cloned an existing theme and you want to update that. So first you navigate to the theme builder just as you would if you're creating a new one. Instead of clicking the create button, however, you'd click the edit link of the theme that you want to update. Then just as you would if you were creating a new one, you update the parameters for that theme, the colors, logos, and so on. And you can update the user attributes or the, the users that you want to see this and access this theme. Again, if you've cloned one, the user set that you had for the original will carry over to the clone. So you may want to add or remove a few users. And then finally, you, you publish the changes just as you would when you create them. In some cases, you want to make sure that a theme goes through an approval process before it's published. So that's easy to do. You turn on the, the approval process in this page through the Theme Builder Administration page. Just simply click the checkbox and then determine the approval role. In most cases, that will be the Theme Builder Administrator. Now that you understand more about Theme Builder, let's look at doing branding using People Tools macro sets. 
First, we'll cover a macro set overview, understand what they are, and then we'll look at how to update a theme using macro sets. Theme macro sets are a new feature delivered in PeopleTools 855. They're meant to ease styling in Fluid applications or make it easier than styling using uh, Application Designer. Theme macro sets are not as easy, however, as using the Theme Builder, which was described earlier. Uh, however, for customers that don't have Theme Builder or don't have the PeopleSoft Interaction Hub, they can use macro sets uh, to do their branding. So a macro set is basically the total set of elements that can determine the appearance of your system. So this would include things like the, the header, background color, and so on, logos and things. The macros themselves are like parameters. So those are the where you actually set the color, set the logo, and the total set of those macros determine what your system will look like. The process for using theme macro sets is similar to using Theme Builder. Initially, you'll want to analyze the delivered list of macros and identify the ones that you want to change to reflect your organization's branding requirements. Next, we recommend cloning an existing theme that we deliver, and that's listed here, PT Default Macro Set 855. Then take that clone and update the different macros that you want to change, change the colors, the logos, and so on. Then you assign that macro set to the theme that you want to use. And then finally, test and migrate the changes to other content systems if, if that's what you want to do. So let's take a look at the components that are used to clone and change a macro set. As I mentioned, we recommend using the delivered macro set, cloning that, and then changing it. So you would change the macro set name here and the description. Then you can see here that there are a large number of macros that are part of the macro set. And then the macro values are the colors, logos, and things that you can change with for each macro in the macro set. Notice also that there's a description field over there. This helps you determine which macros and macro values you want to change. Notice also that there are many macros that are part of the set. In fact, there are 177 of them. So in many cases, you won't want to change most of those. Most of the time, you'll just be changing a few of them and accepting the defaults for, for many of the others. In addition, you can also export this grid to Excel, and that will enable you to help with the analysis of which macros you want to change. Once you've cloned your macro set and edited the clone to give it the styling features that you want, you'll assemble the theme. Now, what that means basically is determining which macro set is applied to the theme. In this case, uh, you'll want to use the macro set that you cloned and assign that to the theme that you want. So there's a new field there in 855, the macro set field. Set that to the value of the clone that you created. You'll also want to set the other fields indicated here that are circled in red, the home page header, the classic components, and the fluid components. This basically makes sure that all of your components, whether classic or fluid, receive the styling that you want, the fluid styling. So in summary, with theme macro sets, once again, we recommend that you clone our default macro set, PT Default 855, and then alter the clone that you've, that you've created. This will work with both classic content pages and fluid content pages. In addition, it's important to understand that macro sets provide the same capabilities and level of branding as Theme Builder, but Theme Builder is just a lot easier, and I think you, you see that in the demos. So we recommend using Theme Builder wherever you can. Finally, let's take a look at how you use theme macro sets that are part of PeopleTools 855. This is, again, for customers who don't use the Interaction Hub, but still want to do deep branding. So go to the nav bar, open the navigator, and under the branding folder, you can go to the theme macro set menu choice. OK, so here we see a list of macro sets. And as I said, we recommend cloning the PT default macro set 855. And in this case, I've created a clone here, the Spotlight theme. You can copy it. But let's, let's open that and take a look at it. So here you see a list of all the macros that are part of that. And since it was a clone, it's essentially the same at this point as the default one. 
And then you also see all the values for each one of those macros that are part of the set. So you can change the colors, icons, and so on. Notice that there's 177 macros in this macro set, and that's essentially the same as the Theme Builder Advanced settings. You can also export this grid to Excel, which is handy in that it lets you evaluate, uh, using the description, evaluate all the macros and all their values and see which ones you want to change. So next, let's look at assembling the theme. So this is basically taking the macro set that you've, you've just created and you've changed and assigning it to whatever theme you want to apply to. So here we'll do a quick search and we find the, the theme that we want. And so here, I've already set this, but you can see you set that field, choose the macro set that you created and apply it to this theme. And of course, you want to set those values for classic components and fluid components as well. And then after you've done that, finally you go to the navigator again and assign the themes. And this is, again, assigning it to the, assign this theme to the people that will see this theme. Now you might recognize that this is very similar to uh, the theme builder wizard. So here you just choose the theme, the roles that you want as part of it. You can add ones or you can delete them and so on and then just save it and, and go ahead. And so those are the people then that will, will see this theme that you've created. Finally, let's take a look at some additional resources that are available to you. There's some great additional information in people books on Theme Builder. If you look uh, in people books under the Interaction Hub for Image 2, uh, under Branding, PeopleSoft Fluid User Interface, there's some great stuff there on Theme Builder. There's also some really good stuff on defining macro sets in PeopleTools 855 people books, and that's listed here. Thank you very much.